Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be talking about how to save money and manage your money at a young age. I'm also gonna talk about how to save while still finding room to go shopping because shopping is my favorite thing to do. I consider it a hobby. So without further ado, let's get right into it. If you guys don't know, I have a Medium account, which is basically a blog account where you can just post a whole bunch of stories and updates and everything that you want. And then people can follow you, they can comment, they can like your stuff. I definitely recommend getting it if you're looking for somewhere to post your blogs. I talk about it all the time. I have so many articles on there and a lot of times the articles correspond with a lot of videos that I make. So this article has actually been up, I'm looking at my computer right here. But this article has actually been up since March 18th. I've just been waiting to do a video on it because it's a really good article. And I think a lot of people need help saving and especially as a young adult in college, trying to work, doing online classes during the pandemic and all that. Sometimes people just need a little bit of advice on how to just manage money because it's not exactly easy and it takes a lot of time to kind of figure out. So I will have this Medium account linked down below. I definitely recommend going to check out that article if you don't want to watch this whole video you can go read it there but i hope you want to watch through correspond with youtube videos and turn my sound off I'm basically going to go through a whole bunch of tips and tricks and i'll start with number one which is put more in than you put out so what i mean by this is make sure that there is more money going into your account than what you are putting out and so some examples that i use here which again if you guys want to just go right to the medium account and read this if it's like too much to comprehend because some of it is kind of complicated just to understand with me talking but maybe i'll put some inserts here and help you guys out but what i mean by this is if you get a paycheck for the week and it's 450 dollars let's say do not spend more than 450 dollars that week of your paycheck it is impossible for you to save if you're constantly putting out more than what's going into your account. It's just impossible and you're not gonna save. It's not gonna work out. Say you get a $450 check and you spend $400 of it every week. No matter what, you will save because you'll have an extra $50 going into your account every single week. But just make sure that you put in more than you put out. If you want to save a lot faster, then don't put out so much. Make sure that there's a lot more going in. But even if you spend like $449 out of your $450 paycheck, yes, you'll still be saving. It'll only be a dollar, but it will be a much slower process than if you were to just spend like 50 or $60. The second piece of advice that I recommend is a savings week. And this is really hard for me. So my saving week is when I basically try to spend Spend as little to no money as I can in that week. So a lot of times I'll have a savings week after I spend a lot of money the past few weeks if I go on a trip or shopping trips or, or do a lot of online shopping or if I go out to dinner a lot. I'll try to just have a whole savings week where I spend money on nothing, except I like to limit myself to gas, food, which means like if I need to go buy breakfast or lunch or something, or any type of bills, like my insurance bill, I used to have a car bill, the rent bill, things like that. So it's important to kind of limit yourself if you're gonna have spending week, just make sure that you have savings weeks. And then a big problem that I have is feeling guilty when I'm shopping. It won't stop me from shopping, I'll still go out and spend as much money as I want and get a whole bunch of stuff, but it still doesn't stop this like weird guilty feeling that I have when I do it, but I just love shopping. But if I give myself a savings week and then the next week I go shopping, I'm like, all right, it's okay for me to spend this money because I spent very limited last week, so I know that I can afford this. So give yourself savings weeks, ground yourself, try not to spend money and it'll make spending money that much better. The third piece of advice is finding alternatives. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing and there's a whole bunch of math in the Medium post and a lot to kind of wrap your head around but what i mean by this is i'll give an example that i listed in my article is i used to go to dunkin donuts every morning i'd get a sandwich and a coffee and if you saw my what i eat in a day which was posted quite a while ago i actually filmed myself going to dunkin and i have completely stopped doing that because normally my breakfast sandwich would probably cost me about five bucks my coffee would be about four dollars which is nine dollars every morning so if i spend nine dollars five times a week that's 45 dollars but what i started doing is going to the grocery store and buying a huge box of breakfast sandwiches that was maybe about five dollars for like 12 sandwiches so right there i'm already saving so much money by just buying a big box of breakfast sandwiches for one bigger price and then making those every day i save so much money 
And as far as coffee goes, um, I was getting coffee every morning, so it wasn't really that special to me. So I completely just got rid of coffee and I've actually kind of weaned myself off of it and I don't even need it to get started in the morning. Normally orange juice works just fine. But now that when I go to Dunkin' and I get a coffee, it's kind of like a little reward. Like it's special because I don't get it every day now. Back to the point, finding alternatives. Instead of getting a breakfast sandwich from Dunkin' every morning, maybe buy this stuff to make your own sandwiches or buy the pre-made sandwiches like I do. I also bought oatmeal and chia seeds. It's a really easy thing to make at work because all I need is hot water. I definitely recommend that and you will just save money if you just buy it all at once. It'll last you so much longer and it'll be way cheaper than just going and spending that much money every morning. And if you guys go to the Medium website page, it talks about a whole bunch of this and a lot of numbers and money and savings and all that. Another example that I listed was I used to pay $40 every two weeks to get my nails filled, which is, I know, so expensive. It should really only be like $10 or $15, but there's literally only like one nail salon near me. If I want to go to like a nail salon where it's a little bit cheaper, it's like an hour away. It's crazy. One day, hopefully I'll live closer to a salon. But instead of paying $40 every two weeks to get my nails done, which I don't have right now, but I went online to Rossi. I am gonna have like a full Rossi nail review coming up soon. I'm gonna do my nails and show you guys how all that goes. I dropped $100 on, around $100 on a complete full Rossi nail dip powder kit. And then that is gonna last me probably over a year, maybe even two or three years. And so it's one payment of $100 for three years, or I could have been paying $40 every two weeks which is like crazy, I can't believe I did it. Like the amount of money I spent on my nails is insane. But now that I have my Rossi kit, I did spend one chunk of money, but in like literally two to three times of getting my nails done, I would have paid over that anyway. Find alternatives. Number four is sell unwanted stuff, AKA clothes. So a lot of times when my closet starts to get filled up with all new clothes, I like to go through all my clothes and I don't get rid of a ton of stuff. I didn't like, I don't throw them away. But what I'll do is take pictures of some of the nicer stuff like Hollister, American Eagle, Charlotte Russe, or just like really nice like off-brand stuff. And I'll send pictures to my friends with a price and then I'll keep track in my notes of who wants what and how much I want to charge for that. And then they'll buy them. And then I made a little bit of money and I didn't just waste money by throwing those clothes away. And then in the end, if I have left over clothes that people don't want to buy I will donate them that's just a good thing to do I just feel like a good person especially if I'm donating some high quality stuff that I know is expensive but I know that someone else needs that more than me another thing is before you go shopping try and get rid of a whole bunch of clothes you have more room for more clothes and two again if you sell all those clothes that you go through you're gonna be making more money and then you can go shopping so sell your unwanted clothes instead of giving them away number five elite savers online secrets I know that is quite the title for number five but this is where I kind of talk about some secrets that I have first one is you can go online if you do online shop and you can find so many random codes and save so much money a huge one is Shutterfly I love getting books for presents for people but I also love putting all my pictures into like photo books and ordering those you can literally go online and search Shutterfly codes and then just type in a whole bunch of random codes until one of them works and they really do work it'll even say like when the last person used it when the last time it worked, how many times it has worked, and you can literally save so much money doing that. And it's not just Shutterfly, literally if you go on any online website and you just search a code for like if you're gonna buy Crocs, I don't know, I bought my mom Crocs for Mother's Day, but if you search like codes for Crocs and like random codes pop up, just type them in and see if they work because most of the time one of them will eventually work and you can save like 20% off, you can get free shipping. Also another huge elite savers tip that I have is if you are going to buy something and they ask for your email and they say, oh, first time user, save 20%. Just type in your email and sign up real quick. As long as it doesn't ask for your credit information or payment information, don't do that. But most of the time they'll just ask for like your first name, last name, and your email. Just do it and you'll literally save like on that first purchase, especially if you're just buying from the website one or two times. Type in your email and you will get like so many saving codes, coupons, all that, just for being a first time user. And then if you start getting emails from them, you can scroll all the way down to the bottom and it's always like super tiny, but you can just hit unsubscribe and, and then they'll try and convince you not to unsubscribe. Just go through it and unsubscribe and then you'll be done with it and you just save money. So. That's a huge secret. And, and I know that these are just little things, but in the end, they add up to so much. Number seven, save the literal cash. 
So where I work, I get a lot of cash tips as a bartender. So with that cash that I get, if I have like $40 sitting in my wallet, I am so much, I will literally spend that cash so much faster than I would spend $40 on my debit card. And that's just because I feel like it's not being taken off my debit card. It's just cash, so it doesn't really matter. So as soon as you get cash, the one thing that I like to do is put cash into gas. Fill up my tank, and then if I still have a lot of leftover cash, I'll put that right into my bank account. Just go in and fill out a deposit slip onto my card, put it through the little, the little little vacuum thing just get rid of the cash and then you'll be less likely to spend it unless you're the opposite i know some people like to not spend cash and spend on their credit card just whatever works for you do that but for me i like to put the cash away as soon as i can also being a woman i feel like having a lot of cash in my wallet kind of freaks me out because if someone was to rob me i would much rather than take my debit card because i can just call the bank and turn it off but if i have a bunch of cash in there they can just take that and i most likely won't get it back so i think it's also just a comfort thing too but yes save the literal cash. So that is my tips and tricks for how to save and manage money as a young adult. I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, make sure you check out my Medium link if you want this all written out, if that's a better way for you to understand. But thank you so much for watching. As always, subscribe. I post new videos every single week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.